Uh, these are the first pictures into us showing people's pages exploding in Lebanon. Now, the government is urging people to get rid of their pages after this bizarre attack. Uh, sources say pages belonging to members of the Iran-backed Hezbollah began exploding in areas where the group operates. Uh, let's just watch this video again. This is video just into CNN. It shows the moment where pages uh, exploded. This is in one of the markets, as you can see. All right, Ben, um, you're, you're listening in on all these uh, new lines that are coming in. Iran's ambassador to Lebanon injured uh, in this attack, according to Iranian media. We are hearing uh, Lebanese health department really asking for all health workers to, to report back to work. We don't know what the target is. We don't know who the target was. We, we're getting more in, information on this front, Ben. Uh, but as this is all coming to a head at this stage, um, I, I wonder from your perspective, and this is the big concern, what it means for the region from a security perspective, from, a, from an escalation uh, point of view as well, Ben? Well, this certainly represents a serious escalation because what we're talking about is, according to these uh, Lebanese security uh, sources, hundreds of people being injured. And by all accounts, they seem to be all Hezbollah members. And probably these are Hezbollah members who are not sort of rank and file. These are probably uh, local commanders, people who uh, are in charge of units, lead units from Hezbollah. And the fact that Mushtaba Amani, the uh, Iranian ambassador to Beirut, may be among the injured sort of brings it up another level because you are talking about an Iranian diplomat uh, being injured in this. Don't forget that on the 1st of April of this year, there was an, it's what's widely believed to have been an Israeli strike on an dip, Iranian diplomatic complex in Damascus, which that set off a series of uh, strikes and counter strikes, raising uh, the temperature uh, even further. So this may be a similar sort of event where not only are there perhaps hundreds, perhaps more uh, casualties among Hezbollah members, but also a senior Iranian diplomat uh, as well. So certainly this sets the stage for a major escalation between not only Hezbollah and Israel, but perhaps Iran as well. All right, Ben Wiedemann, thank you so much. Um, joining us now, we've got uh, Firaz Maksad, who uh, is the director of outreach at the Middle East Institute in Washington, as we're getting this breaking news in with hundreds of people injured, uh, specifically Hezbollah uh, members, uh, after their pages exploded. Uh, Firaz, great to have you with us. What is your initial response to this news? No doubt a, a major operation and uh, a, a, a wonderful, I mean, Maybe wonderful is the wrong word, but an exceptional breakthrough for, for Israeli intelligence there to be able to penetrate Hezbollah's telecommunication network and blow up hundreds, if not thousands, of, of pagers all at once. So, Firaz, just, just to interject there, you, you, you mentioned uh, Israeli intelligence uh, being behind this. Is, is, that, is that what you're characterizing this as, that Israel was behind this? We don't have confirmation of that, um, and of course... We're getting information in uh, in real time. Why do you assume it's Israel? Absolutely. I mean, in the context of all that's happening, there is very little doubt yeah. in my mind, and I think in the mind of most Middle East watchers, that Israeli intelligence is behind this. Now, Israel does have a long track record of sometimes, quite often, actually not claiming its operations to allow for some plausible deniability and perhaps mm. allow the other side to de-escalate and not feel that they are compelled to retaliate. But for all practical reasons, everybody here would probably just suspect Israel as being behind this operation. Uh, as we're getting more information in, and, and the other piece of news from Iranian uh, media is that the Iranian uh, ambassador to Lebanon was also injured. How significant is this? Well, I mean, this is very significant because we currently have the American envoy in Israel and in the region very much for the purpose of de-escalating and preventing Israel from broadening this war, uh, pulling Lebanon into it in a major way, and also in a manner that can also bring in and drag in his, uh, sorry, Iran, Hezbollah's main patron, which perhaps and has threatened before openly not to stand by if Israel launches a major operation in Lebanon. So yes, this has the hallmark of an Israeli operation. 
it has the propensity, the potentiality to broaden in a way yeah. that the American administration has been pushing and trying to thwart through diplomacy for quite some na time now, almost a year since October 7th. Uh, Juliet, um, in terms of Iranian's ambassador uh, to Lebanon being part of the injured as well, um, we've spoken about this um, for the last few minutes to, to sort of get a sense and understand um, what this means in terms of escalation. Um, you've just heard from Faraz. He says this has got the hallmarks of an Israeli attack. We just don't know yet. But how are you going to read into this in terms of what it could mean regionally? Yes. So I, I, and one, we don't have to be blind to the idea that, of course, this is Israel. I know it's not proven yeah. yet, but there, there's no other there's no other entity that has the uh, 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 desire and capability mm. of doing something uh, like this. And they they they, they hinted at it uh, yesterday. So as for so this is a the, the Iranians will see this as a direct attack on one of their senior government officials. So one could imagine how. Uh, uh, Iran is going to react. Uh, it would be no different than if their ambassador, in their mind, was uh, shot at, assassinated, kidnapped, or, or whatever else. Now, they may. The, the, the irony here, of course, is, and the question I ask out loud is, what is what is the Iranian ambassador uh, uh, to to um, to Lebanon doing with a network of communications? that is limited to Hezbollah. Uh, and the, uh, the, this is a, uh, we know why, and this is a, uh, but they're gonna have to fess up to that. There, I think the Iranians will, will claim that, that, that he was on just a usual uh, beeper network, but it's clear the ties between Hezbollah uh, uh, and Iran and leadership uh, flowed through uh, uh, an ambassador or others who, who had direct ties yeah. with has belonged. But this is the regional conflict we've been we've been worried about. Every time we get to a moment where things could uh, uh, be triggered into a greater, I, I'm not minimizing what's already happening there. It's a regional conflict in some respects, but it's not a regional war. This is the the question is is uh, are we over the brink now, or can um, ca uh, can all entities bring it back? All right, Paula. What more are we learning? We know from a Lebanese security source that hundreds uh, have been injured. We know that this is a, a pager uh, system, if you like, that is used by the uh, the militant group Hezbollah. Uh, we don't know, though, the, the, how many Hezbollah have been injured, how many uh, civilians have been injured. That's simply not information we have at this point. So uh, potentially in an hour's time, we will get a lot more uh, clarity on what has happened. We do know the public uh, declarations from the Ministry of Health at this point have pointed to the fact that it is a significant event. The fact that they're calling health officials back to their hospitals saying everybody has to go back to work so that we can cope with the, the sheer number of injured that are coming into the hospitals, calling for, uh, for civilians to be, yeah. to be given, giving blood uh, to help with those injuries. So presumably they are significant injuries in some occasions. Yeah, and we're waiting for that number, but we do have some video just into CNN uh, just showing uh, some footage of uh, health workers arriving at hospitals. We'd just like to share that with you. Um, this is what we have right now, and you can see. Okay, Faraz, I, I want you to give me a sense of you know, because we've got the, the, the immediate impact, so people that are injured, uh, the health department trying to get people back at work uh, immediately. We, again, trying to confirm the number of injured. We know that it was Hezbollah pages for now, still waiting for that. But there's a political element to this, and it's it's a really big one in a, at a time where you've got incredible tension uh, in the region. You have a war that is raging between uh, Hamas and uh, uh, Israel, and, of course, that's spilling over into Lebanon. And the the huge ramifications of an attack of this nature. Yeah, no doubt that uh, today's attack is a watershed moment in this conflict that's been raging now for almost a year between Hezbollah uh, and Israel. But it's not disconnected. There's a broader context here. We all recall back in August, um, the assassination of Hezbollah's chief of staff in the heart of the Hezbollah-controlled southern suburbs of Beirut. There's been a series of attacks against Hezbollah by Israel that can be designed to spark a major war, to be, to be a pretext for broadening this war. And I think Hezbollah is very much being put in a difficult situation, a policy dilemma, if you may. 
If they respond and respond forcibly to such attacks, this being the latest and perhaps arguably the biggest, uh, then it risks giving Bibi Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, the pretext he is looking for to broaden, a war, broaden this war with Lebanon and potentially pull in Iran. But if they don't, they lose and hemorrhage their deterrence, inviting Israel and Netanyahu to conduct further operations as we see today. There's a third option. And really, I mean, my sense is, particularly with U.S. diplomacy active on this and the, the presidential envoy in the region, Hezbollah can very much make that decision still to unbuckle the Lebanon front from the Gaza front. That support front, which Hezbollah launched in support of Hamas in, in October 8, has run its course and really has very much yielded very little in terms of returns for both Lebanon and Hezbollah and the Iranian axis. So there is a third path here to de-escalate. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, not too sure Hezbollah will take it. 